This Sunday. This Sunday. Side by side at the microphone, from the green light to the speed trap, Chris Switzer and Ray Garino calls them as they see them, and you better believe them. Here, relevant news, biased opinions, and outright bullshit regarding every aspect of automotive culture. Gas, yes. the mechanical trickery never before revealed over FCC regulated airwaves. Thrilled to the explosive tension as Chris and Ray cuss each other down the track and barrel roll across the finish line, laughing at certain disaster as they shake hands for the devil. All that and much more this Sunday at high noon on the Motormouth Radio Hour. Call in and speak live with the wizards of speed and live feed, Chris Switzer and Ray Garino. Bring the whole family. Kids under 12 get in free. Every Sunday at noon on WHPC, take the Long Island Expressway to the Meadowbrook Parkway and look for the sign saying no parking on the expressway and no express service on the parkway. Go ride on Highway 24 to Garden City. $2 all-day parking includes pit pass. And I think you found a way to do it by tuning in to Motormouth Radio, Long Island's only funky, funkified automotive talk show here on the Island of Long with your hosts, Ray Guarino and the guy who knows the APA method, Chris Switzer. How are you, Chris? Doing well, Ray. Thank you. All you right. know, it's funny because I hear that music and I hear it a little distorted in my in my uh, headphones here. Oh yeah, and and the funny thing is when you hear it when you hear funkify uh-huh. a little distorted. Uh huh. <laughs> it 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 raises an eyebrow or two or something else. <laughs> yeah, listen to that, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah. It sounds like sounds like something you should be doing with fries. Yeah. Not any further than that. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, this is what happened. You know, sometimes the best laid plans of radio jocks, DJs, automotive talk hosts gets uh, fried. And yeah. last week, you know, we we had Dave uh, Dave Barden from Power Probe on as our yeah. guest. Great show. Go to MotormouthRadio.com. You can hear it because it really wasn't anywhere else. We found a way to do a show when the station was down. And, yes. and it is up there. It's also on Spreaker and it's on uh, on Odyssey under WHPC. But because uh, Dave was representing the, uh, the Power Probe company, I decided we would have music by the Tower of Power. Tower of Power, of course. Right. So, of course, I was thinking. I was thinking Parliament Funkadelic. No, yeah. George Clinton. Yeah, that's yeah. that's Parliament. No, I figured. You know what? What better way to kind of you know just segue in with uh, you know Tower of Power, and uh, of course those plans got dashed because we couldn't use music last week the way we did the show. We were lucky we were right. able to get audio up there. Well, we were the only only radio program on WHPC that was able to generate a program yeah. with a station that was down. I think that alone deserves high praise, if you ask yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we definitely did. Uh, we, we we pulled it together and did it. So, again, check that out. That was on last week. That was good. Uh, good programming. Dave always teaches us good stuff. The tools and, and um, well, basically just the tools, the diagnostic stuff, the power probe cells. I used them. Used them for years. And, you know, Joe was a big fan and a big proponent of the power probe. Yeah. He got me into it, and and I know that it, it really is. Once you get, like anything else, you have to get a learning curve to to learn it and then be comfortable with it, and you find, wow, this thing can really do a lot of cool stuff. So, And you guys are a couple of chapters ahead of me, so I am really, look, I learned a ton last week uh, talking yep. to Dave. So I'm, I'm out and about going to get myself some uh, decent... Uh, probing equipment for, <laughs> for my for my random repairs. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny, and I was thinking about this too uh, about Power Probe well, during the week. I am actually looking for a cheap vehicle. Right? We discussed this uh, uh, a little bit. Well, and, you know what? Because before you get huh? into the cheap vehicle, as we know, we yeah. talked to Dave, and he knew how to get us. How can people get us today to talk to us? 
Oh, you can call us at 516-572-7440. That you can do right now to speak to Ray or I or both of us if you right. like. I mean, you, that's the way things work. And you can also uh, you can check us out on uh, Instagram at uh, real underscore right. Motormouth Radio. That's always a biggie. And you can check us out at MotormouthRadio.com. Right. And you can send up a bet signal if you like. There's and, Twitter. Uh, you can and and what else? Oh, Twitter, Twitter. And Facebook, and all that, uh, and all the social uh, gagats that's and, out there. And yes. on those two, it's just it's like the web. It's motor mouth radio. That's all. Right. So, the only underscore <laughs> is on Instagram. Right. So. And we're not doing TikTok yet, so we don't have to worry about that. No, no, that's because we're adults. The only TikTok is my wa- well. You know what? A lot of adults are using TikTok. You know what? As I'm saying it, it's true. <laughs> it's true. There are people people I know that are older than I am that are using TikTok. And enjoying it, which is kind of funny. And getting a lot of hits, a lot of hits. The only TikTok really? I have is uh, in my watch fob in my pocket. So, anyway. <laughs> so you were talking about again, like you said, a, yeah. a cheaper car, you- and uh, I remember that every every day as I drove the Mazda this week. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You have you have a valuable vehicle that in, that that gained valuability in the span of two weeks because gasoline is 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 skyrocketing and and everybody is looking for a small cheap used car because every Honda Civic from the early two thousands I see come up for sale is gone. Yeah, literally within like twenty four hours, bang out the door. And I'm finding it's funny because a lot of these cars that I'm looking at or or contemplating have check engine lights on, automatic transmission lights on, uh, EGR lights on. They have all of these, and they're trying to get rid of these cars. And I'm like, ah, oh, right. If I had a power probe, <laughs> well, you sometimes that's the first need thing to do is order the power probe and then go buy the car. You sometimes need more than that, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, obviously, yes, but but you would need a great place, a great launching pad to start off. Right. Which would be something like a good, honest diagnostic tool to handle some. I mean, you also need the knowledge and the foresight to to jump in with the tool. But a, a power probe wouldn't hurt. You need on, a skin. Well, those vehicles. when you don't know the car. Remember, you, 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 remember now, something, you don't know the car. Wow. Be, before we get cards and letters we're chastising you, a power probe is really, like Joe succinctly said, a test light on steroids. It's a device right. like a test light, power and ground, but it lets you check for ground like a, or check for power like a test light does or check for ground. You can reverse a test light. And, you, and check it for power and ground. But sure. the power probe gives you the ability to, with the flip of a button, apply 12 volts or apply a ground. And that's where a test light you know, doesn't do. So that doesn't help with a check engine light. You need a scanner. But No, that is you know. true. You're absolutely right about that. Just but want to it is that. valuable to see if the component is actually working. So you can find out if, oh, is that that component that is setting the light off, yes or no? That was basically where I was going with it. Okay. Because yes, that's that's what you want to know. You want to know if the if that black box that's under your hood <laughs> is actually working or not. <laughs> it's well, that's what Dave said. You got to be careful because with the twelve volts, you could fry the five a five volt signal, uh, yes. and it's not going to help you with a catalytic converter or, or an evap code. But no, <laughs> again, that's why that's why David said they sell those. Uh, I it's like a dongle kind of. It's it's a it's a little box that goes in line with the power probe that instead of applying 12 volts because the power probe connects right to the battery of the vehicle or some other 12 volt source so there's a lot of uh, potential there uh they have a five volt uh slug that goes in the middle that when you push the button will only give you five volts and that's really for your computer signal and stuff but like a transformer uh, i would assume well it's like a step down you know where it'll only give you you know uh, you can build you can build a voltage divider network. You can t- you, know, you can take a, a, a there's a circuit that I built plenty of times with an LM three seventeen T. That's the number of the an adjustable voltage regulator. It's a, it's a oh. it's like a little chip. It's not a chip. It's a it's an active component that goes on a board. But you could mm-hmm. actually um, make a, a a circuit that'll give you anywhere between zero and and uh, you know like twelve volts. So, so a little tiny potentiometer, the kind potentiometer. of, but it's but it's ch- it's not changing resistance; it's changing the voltage. Oh, okay. It's, so a potentiometer, yeah. a potentiometer, if I'm saying that correctly, changes the resistance. Yeah, and doesn't change the voltage. 
Well, pretty. You know what it is? It's you're building a voltage regulator, a, vo- a regulated voltage s- source with the LM three seventeen T is what you're doing. So, and then you can put it in a little box, and if you put basically put twelve volts in, you're going to get five volts out. That's what it's designed right. to do, and that's kind of what the thing is that the power probe is giving you. Um, mm-hmm. Now, uh, Matt Goban Brian did just reply to to that, and I'm sure he's got a ham sandwich with three different cheeses in his hand right now and, and, and a sleeve of Oreos that he stole from Chassis John. <laughs> but he did say, yes, you want to be very careful with airbags. You don't want to be powering on airbags. Ooh. That yellow oh. wire under the dash, stay away from that or else you're going to get a face full of uh, powder. Yes, you hear a, a loud bang. Yes. Brian's my hero. The only guy I know can eat at late at night and, uh, <laughs> and still talk about it the, the next day. <laughs> Yeah, I heard the heard you guys playing in traffic were uh, yeah. go, you know what? getting each other hungry late at night. Go go to YouTube and look up playing in traffic and you'll see last week's last Thursday's video. We had uh we had Tammy what's her last name? Tammy Olson? Uh, Tammy No, I, I forget her last name now. Tammy from uh well she was from Tamco Paints. Now she's from uh Orion Paints. She was a guest, so you see her picture. Look for the good looking girl and not for us, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> it's a three-hour show, okay? Because you know we we did we did the hour hour and a half with the guest, and then of course the same people go and go to bed or go home or wherever they're going, and you know me and John and Brian and maybe one or two other stragglers. Actually, right. uh, Arco hung with us for a while, but at the end it's me and John and Brian. It's like the three. It's like Rocky and and his Russian two Russian counterparts just slugging it out. Like all right, one last thing. And um, <laughs> if you want right. if you don't want to hear the political stuff, literally, go to the last ten minutes of that show and just listen to the food conversation we had, uh-huh. and then contact with, me with uh, the underlying music for the few food conversation going. I think that's what Brian was hearing in his head. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Because we all are, we all are. We all do the same thing. You know, I'm in my basement. Brian's in his basement. John is in his garage. And we all go back in the house, and, and everybody's asleep. So, you know, we all talked how our animals now want to eat. You know, my cat's on the kitchen table. So I got to open a cold cut drawer. And, of course, hey, it's time to, like, nosh a little bit. You want to gr- So this is where we went at the end. But I had a show this to my wife, and, and Brian is the star of the show. This week, he won it because you could see his eyes just, like, swirling and swimming and, like, <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Shut up already, or give me a sandwich. Well, it's part of being a car guy. I yes, mean, there's yes. so many other components that that go hand in hand, and food is definitely like one of them. Yeah, it's just there's there was a show on CNN. It was a Stanley Tucci show where he rediscovers Italy, and he goes to all the Italian towns and 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 samples the food there the the culinary uh cuisine of the populace i know i know and it's it literally is it's you sit there and your mouth waters and like your eyes boggle it's like and all you have in the cupboard is like ragu and you just no that's not gonna work right exactly (laughs) give me me a ham sandwich hey but it's it's the truth yeah yeah but so you know you said car guy let me tell you something about a car guy that we know and love who is now uh our good friend mark trotter down in north carolina um, oh, yeah. mark has a website it's it's you know how to restore an old car mark just wrote another article that we put up on our website it's on the blog actually it's the first thing up and if you subscribe to our blog you would have gotten this in your in your email um, it's an old school small block Chevy build. How to be, and he basically calls out all the uh, components that are specific to the older Chevy small blocks as opposed to the newer gens. And uh, it's very informative. Mark, as always, writes a good article, and we put it up on our site because we always cross-promote with him. It's RestoreAnOldCar.com, and there's a dash, not an underscore, between it's restore dash and dash old dash car dot com and you'll I'm see on it, it now see it on his site but you'll also see it on our site um he did a great job and i want to share that because it's um it's good information uh the other thing i want to talk about we were talking about you know with with these cars and uh you know cheap or not it, doing some financial stuff at the house made me think we're thinking about what things cost for us in a year you know we're really getting down to a fine budget now because we're changing the plan right. in my household so one yeah, of the things i thought inflation i'm sure that plan always changes it does it does like for everybody but i said hey you know what uh, uh, things that you never think of 
when you're looking at your budget, of course, you think of your utilities, you think of insurances, you think of, you know, payoffs to the garbage man. Oh, sh- we didn't put in payoffs to the garbage man. Damn it. That's another, there's another couple hundred, you know, they take engine blocks at my house. So, <laughs> yeah, you got great garbage men. That's for sure. But wh- and you're right. We didn't put that in. See, you always forget stuff. But one of the things I came up with, I told my wife is like, hey, the cars, and I'm not talking about Rick Ocasek. You know, we're not talking about, you know, Candy O. Right. I'm talking about the vehicles in my family. There's the seven of them. There's seven of them that are, all, that are registered and insured and on the road that also need registrations and inspections. Yes. Yep. So I said, okay, let me compute what it costs. I did this a while ago. So I, I computed what it costs for all seven vehicles for the one. Yeah, you know, we have two year registrations here in New York. Sure. So I halved that. So half of the registration cost plus the inspection for that vehicle times seven. What do you think it costs me to keep those cars just in the driveway without putting an ounce of gas in them? Did you throw insurance in that mix as nope. well? No, nope. this is registration and inspection fees, not even insurance. Wow. Oh, gosh. I would say do, 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 do. Uh, a thousand bucks. That's you know you you went a little over right no it's six hundred sixty five dollars and thirty seven cents it cost me for one year before I even wow. touched them so wow. you know you start looking it's a thousand bucks for me because you got to add in in Connecticut the great state of Connecticut has personal property tax oh yeah a lot of places in the south do that too you got to right. you got to pay personal property tax on your vehicle and they let you know now as the vehicle gets slide. older it gets cheaper yes it does so that's why sure. it pays to drive junk like we do. Because mm-hmm. yeah, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, for the for the uh, the three hundred in the garage, I think I paid yeah, it was like fifty bucks, something like that. Well, that's what but, I was told when I was talking to guys down in the south. If I want to relocate, and you know, what does it cost? And they're like, oh well, but your old cars. <laughs> Some of them are just legacied in. They they don't even bother. It's like oh, yeah, it's really? old enough. Wow. Don't worry. You know, it's you know, it's grandfathered wow. in because it's a grand a grandfather car. You know, it's funny. You talk about older vehicles just for just for a second. I just got to go off on a tangent. I was actually looking at this was a, a, a plan that I thought of real quick and, and totally dismissed it. Uh, but I said, you know what? I'm going to look across the country and find the greatest 1985 to 1987 Honda. Okay. If I find the greatest one, like two thousand dollars, I'll just call a flatbed and just send it over. As long as it's as long as it's not rusty. I'll be fine. Yeah. I saw one, mm-hmm. one mm-hmm. CRX, which I can't even use. I would definitely buy seat, a CRX. I would love a CRX. I have nice seats from one. I got the bucket seats huh? for one in my in my garage. <laughs> I had an 84 CRX. It was the greatest car ever. But if are. it didn't ride away, I'd probably still have it. But 87 CRX, fire engine red, on some private site, they wanted $26,000 for it. Yeah, yeah. Ray. An 87 Honda CRX is being offered for $26,000. That doesn't even compute. You could buy a new Honda. You could buy a new Honda for that money. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) But I bet you the CRX, I bet you the CRX gets better gas mileage. I bet you. Than a new car. Because I heard those things get really high mileage. My CRX got, I swear to you, it got anywhere from 35 to 40 miles to a gallon. Yeah, I swear. Yeah. And that car had the worst carburetor in it. It ran like crud sometimes. I don't, I never seen a car do this. It had like eight billion vacuum lines right. on that carburetor. But as you're driving along, the car would slowly die. Huh. Like the RPMs would drop to the point. And you're on the, on the highway, on the belt. And the RPMs would drop down to like literally would just be bopping along at wow. like 50 RPM. It went to it limp just mode. Be, yeah, and then all of a sudden it would just come back to life again. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Yeah, <laughs> and the funny thing, I'm driving a guy home one time who lived near me, and and the cars drop and drop and drop. And he's like, "Dude, it's gonna die," but don't worry. <laughs> yeah, maybe it was starving It'll be for fuel. Maybe it was yeah, starving. It was just bopping along at like 50 RPM, and all of a sudden, whoop! It would wow. come right back up like nothing was wrong. That's I'm weird. like, this is strange. Right. And right. I, Never fixed it because the car literally rotted away. It was yeah. just it was it had become structurally well, uh, compromised. Power so Pro won't didn't. help you with that one either, unfortunately. Yeah, right. so, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. So uh, you know, five one six five seven two seven four four zero. You can call us to talk about your favorite car and gas mileage mm-hmm. and all. And uh, yeah, that's that's the thing these days. So so let me ask you this: with the yeah. uh, gas prices rocketing daily. 
Have you done anything to change? I know we talked about this in 2008, because in 2008 was the last time this happened. It was the last time gas was at $4.34 a gallon here. Have you done anything to modify your driving style and or? Yes. Yes, I have. I stay home. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you know I haven't driven my FJ in like two weeks. I took it with me today, and it right. was the, the Mazda's parked behind the FJ, and it, and it it was at the point where I was taking the Mazda like on a Saturday to go to work and on a Sunday to come here just to run it up and down the highway. Now I did that with I drove the Mazda every day. And I'm taking the FJ once a week because it's <laughs> it's just it flipped the script. It's true. I mean, the funny thing is, I had left because. The uh, my LeBaron with with that little three point oh six cylinder was really the most fuel efficient car in my fleet, and yeah. I'd probably be using that more and more. I'd be hauling lumber in it over to, from Home Depot and sure. going to the dump with it. I mean, it would Did be that my, my fuel efficient car. Yeah, and and, and I, of course I sold it. But the funny thing was that once I sold it, about two people that were interested in it called me oh, back. Oh yeah, literally. Hey, did you sell that car? Did you sell that car? Right. Now I've had a couple guys this week. A couple people had texted me asking me about my Mazda three that's for sale. All of a sudden, right. there's more interest on that, and I gave yes. them the info, and I got crickets. Now I don't know if it's because there's a five speed in that car or what, but yeah. or maybe the price is too high. They don't want to pay the the asking price. And that, yeah, and that may be the case because I'm looking for an automatic because I want something that my wife and I can drive. But I am now slowly gravitating towards a five speed because the five speeds are still slow sellers. Yeah. Th- people can't drive a stick. I know. And millennial, it makes me it's, a, it's a millennial anti theft device. It really is. It's amazing. People can't drive a stick. <laughs> I want us another stick car. Right. And, and even my wife said, she says, look, she says, you can get the stick car, but you're going to run all the errands. And I'm like, right. Uh, do I want to do that? <laughs> they always have a way of, of like putting that codicil in that's going to make you <laughs> rethink your plan, right? Like, you know, if you do that, you can do that. You got my blessing. But if you do, you know this. <laughs> right. Yes, exactly. You could buy the Ferrari, but <laughs> gee, thanks, hon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, I got to pick her up from school. Oh, great. Well, yeah. I mean, that <laughs> well, wouldn't, that wouldn't yeah. be yeah. Wouldn't be a bad thing, but no, no, no. <laughs> but yeah, it's true. You, this you, is you want to have you want to have a, you wanna have a lot. You want to have huh? a lot of fun and ma- and and give your neighbors a, neighbors a great laugh. Why? Buy a small motorcycle. No. <laughs> you get like 60 miles to the gallon on the right bike. No, sir. No I would come way. just to see the just to see the show. <laughs> I, I, really lo- I lo- let me tell you. You have you have introduced me to the motorcycle world basically because yeah. I had little to no knowledge of what goes on on two wheels. Yeah. Uh and, and my four wheel knowledge is a little sketchy too. But but just I don't have the confidence in myself to balance to do something as simple as balance wow. i don't i don't have it no, okay. I, I can't subject uh what small children and old old people and 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 school buses whatever have you can't subject that because i will become a projectile yeah and that, <laughs> real fast and that's why no no way can't do it i'll buy a golf cart <laughs> and, in some states and, that's very popular I will buy a golf cart and and go meandering up and down the roads here, going over to to a stop and shop to pick up uh, fifty dollars worth of a quart of milk and <laughs> bring it back. <laughs> I'll be that guy before I buy a motorcycle. Yeah, that's well, for sure. unfortunately, in in the South, that's very prevalent. You can get you can use golf carts for limited use around the towns and all. Yeah, I know in Florida, it's it's huge. In Arizona, so, some other states, they do that. Well, if, uh, if you think about it, if gas, think about it for a second. Gas goes up to anywhere from seven to ten dollars a gallon. Oh, geez. What do you think people are going to do with these big SUVs? Yeah, they're going to mothball them. They're going to put them up on blocks somewhere, or or, or sell them for. School crap i mean do you remember do you remember the 70s of course you do sure. you remember the late 70s where, where you can buy a 69 roadrunner for 600 bucks because right. gas was more than it should have been i mean right. then the you know, numbers being relative right uh but gas was astronomical at the time and and that's the, those cars were worth nothing and that's why i left because i'm thinking about the 300 sitting in the garage that's going up on blocks yeah. well you know al al jeep and al said an 80s era vw rabbit diesel gets 50 miles per gallon on the highway sure. so that's a good choice 
Oh, but yeah. Absolutely. Find one. You know, I, I, I'll tell you, back in the 70s, that's when I got my motorcycle, my first motorcycle. I was driving my GTO at the time as a daily car, and and we had gas rationing back then. That was like the second gas crisis in the late I 70s. I remember that, 78, 79. And what sure. I would do is fill the pe- tank in a Pontiac, which is, I don't know, like a 20 something, get 24, 26 gallon tank. Back the car into the driveway, all the way in the back, and I would just siphon out of the car to fill the motorcycle and drive that thing all week. It was, uh, but I tell you what, yeah, we, um, there's all hysterical. Also, let, let's, uh, let's push the buttons here. Let's, we got a phone caller, so let's go to the phones and go to the fun and see who wants to speak with the motor mouths. Hey, how you doing, guys? It's Tom Eggs. How are you? What's happening, Tom? Hey, Tom. I just want to come in. You're talking about motorcycles. I would commute to work. On, uh, I had a couple of motorcycles, but my little one was a 250 Cowie, and I got 68 miles to gallon, and I could commute to work on it, back and forth. Yeah. Tom, have you called us before? Yes, I have. I kind of, yeah, it's been a while, though, right? Yes. Yes, it what, is. What town are you from? You're, you're a local guy, right? I'm in Seaford. Oh, right, for Seaford. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Tom, you know, yeah. what did you do? If you commuted back and forth with your motorcycle, what did you do in inclement weather? When it rained, were you okay with that? If, did you ride in the snow or, yeah. or in a hurricane or a cyclone or anything like that? You know, How was snow that I would not ride in, but I rode in all the weather. I rode out to Montauk three times a day, uh, a week, all year round. If it wasn't snowing, I right. rode. That's wow. what we do when we get a motorcycle. In, in back then, we I remember going to Hot Dog Beach, going to the Hamptons, going out on the North Fork. Every, you couldn't stop me. I was everywhere. That's uh, really? those are good days. Yeah, I I, I I actually I lived for it. I just I rode. I enjoyed it. And if it wasn't snowing, and occasionally you got caught in snow, but if it wasn't snowing, I would go out. Tom, what was the coldest temperature you ever rode in? <laughs> I, if I recall, it was 36 degrees coming back from Montauk to Seaford. was yeah. quite a ride. It was, damn, it was horrendous, but I made it. Right. <laughs> and your face fell off, I'm assuming. <laughs> oh, full face helmet, uh, you know, balaclava, everything you can imagine to try to stay warm. Heated grips on the bike, but it was cold. Uh, I I still enjoyed it at the time. You know, Tom, I have to tell you, this is very prophetic. This is the topic that got me involved with Motormouth Radio. Because Chris had uh, Mikey T and the Bronx sitting in the studio, and they were talking about motorcycles and yeah. clothing, and, and they were talking old school. And I came through old school like they did, but now I was using new school techniques. And I had a call to set these jabonis straight, and... <laughs> That's what got me involved, and now here I am running a freaking board in this place. But you know, now it's all yeah. Now on my bike, you 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 know, you're right. Heated grips, but you know what? Better than that, the heated grips don't really work too well under 20 degrees. So now there's heated gloves and heated glove liners, heated. I got a heated pants, heated jacket, heated you know heated socks. I've never even used them. I've gone down to 13 degrees and and been actually comfortable. Uh, so oh wow, yeah. I, I I don't have that stuff. And I haven't gone to that level. Do you still yet. have? Do you still ride a bike? I do. I do. What's a, what do you have now? What what's your your bike of choice? R eleven hundred S BMW. It's a two thousand four. There you go. Okay. It has heated grips. Right. I've run many miles on it. Mm-hmm. And I really enjoy riding. You know, that, and the, you know, the R11s, as I recall, you know, you, do you have like a little tiny, a, a small little fairing on the front, or no fairing at all over the headlight? Uh, uh, short, uh, low fairing, yeah, you short. can adjust. So it is what it is. Yeah, but it does have the heated grips. You see, I have a, I have a BMW also, but it's a K bike. And it's oh okay a K eleven T so it's basically got the full fairing the adjustable windshield I, it, it, the bike stays home in the summer because there's no airflow it's it's too hot in the summer but in the winter and the cool months oh is it a joy yeah really I never thought about that it's too hot in the summer it is it's too hot in the summer interesting yeah interesting I never had that really thought because everything I ride is usually no windshield or short right well. That's that's the thing. That my, my friend Tony, who got me into the BMWs many years ago, told me this, and he's always said it. A man cannot have but one motorcycle alone. You need at least three. 
to really cover all your bases. And and then Tony said, well, and maybe five. You know, if you really want to like, <laughs> you, know, you want that nice uh, fast sport bike, you want the really big dresser. So I, I, but I agree. I think I could probably make a good case for two, but three would really put me in a comfort zone so I'd have everything I needed as far as a motorcycle is concerned. Wow. So it's, it's, it it's, hard to, it's hard to stop. Yeah, once you get one, you want something else, and maybe fill out like, oh, maybe this is something I wasn't thought of before. Right. I'm off to five. So. Oh, it's five? Uh, what, what, well, before, before we let you go, where do you get that BMW serviced? Uh, I used to go to Westchester BMW that closed. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm now dealing with Manhattan BMW. Right, right. Yes. And uh, yeah, the hun- place hun- in Huntington, Huntington closed, closed Valley ago. Stream closed. Yep, I know. Went through yes, all myself. Valley Stream. Yeah. Yep. That's where I bought my bike. All have yeah. closed. Right. Yeah, I used to deal with um, a awesome. guy who was very good in Westchester, but oh, Westchester. Okay. long gone. Right. All right. Well, Bob, I tell you what, the, the Tom. Thanks for the call, and uh, don't be a stranger. Call again, and we'll talk. Uh, we'll talk bikes as we're getting into the season. I want. I'd like to do a motorcycle show. I was thinking about having getting Gerard in from Rolling Thunder Cycles and do a, another motorcycle show. So That'd yeah, cool. feel free to call and chime in about motorcycles. I love talking about them. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, Tom. Thanks for the call. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Take care. All right. So long. All right. Well, Chris, that uh, that takes us to see if I have another BMW buddy. You never know who you are. Yeah, find. look at that. Meet, meet you guys the, are... Uh... Meet the nicest people doing a radio show. Um, <laughs> but now, notwithstanding, it is the bottom of the hour, and we need to take a break. So do you have a bottom of the hour break, a uh, thing that you do, the voodoo that you do, the <laughs> honor group of the hour, which is now... We put those up on YouTube so people can see and hear them... <laughs> Yeah, without listening to the show. <laughs> right. The, the knowledge and foresight within this fine program. Yes, we do. This is the Motormouth Radio on a group of the hour. And this week, if you are one of those individuals that gets in the car, starts it up, and immediately drives away. And this is for all those people that pay too much for gasoline or use too much of it, I should say. If you just take off and not wait for the engine to warm up, you don't check your gauges, you don't affix your cell phone to the dash clip, you don't check your mirrors, you don't let the windows defog, and you are simply sitting on the seatbelt and you're dashing out, you run out of the cul-de-sac and off the block before the interior chimes go off, you, well, you know, uh, you just when you start the car and you race off, you know your car pays the price for your poor time management, as well as the neighborhood kids, bicycle riders, the mailman, and your neighbor's lawns. So, if you love to race off as fast as you can, as soon as you can, then you are part of the Motormouth Radio on a group of the hour. Oh, uh, that's a great one. <laughs> do you fall into that group? Is that one of yours? or? Uh... Uh, do, well, yes, when, when I had to catch a train. <laughs> I, I can see that. I can see that. Uh, and I'll, and I, will, uh, I, I will also say this. Uh, you want to tune in in mornings, if you like uh, morning drive, a little later on the drive. But uh, the Nassau Morning Madhouse, weekday mornings between 7 and 9 on this fair station. You can find out what you need to know to start your day the right way. Tune in to find out what's trending and maybe laugh a little too. So do that. Until then, you're going to funkify with us a little because, you know, it's just like when you were playing with that propane and, and, the, uh, and the flintlock. You ended up with a flesh in the pan. You may have another one now to deal with, so uh, st- stay tuned. Uh, yeah. How long did it take you to come up with that? Uh, it's the name of the song, so I usually try to figure my segues into the name or the wow, or a lyric. I liked it. And even though it doesn't start off like, well, should, that's the name of the song by Tower of Power. So. Right. Uh, yeah, the flint just – I looked at you. I thought of butane and, and then flint, so I said, okay, good, flesh in a pan. <laughs> so keep it where you got it for a couple minutes while we pay some bills on Motormouth Radio, and we'll be back. Ray Guarino, Chris Switzer, and keep it where you got it on 90.3 WHPC. Groove it, brother. I thought I found a love that glittered like gold, a sweet thing, the apple of my eye. 
This show on 90.3 WHPC is brought to you by Car Star Celebrity Chase Collision with two locations in Limbrook and Oceanside who remind you that New York State law says you always have the right to choose which shop will fix your car. Car Star Celebrity Chase Collision offers a full range of services, 24-hour towing between Montauk and Manhattan, shuttle service, and they can help you with a rental car arrangement if needed. All repairs include the Car Star Lifetime Nationwide Warranty, ensuring that the experts at Celebrity Chase Collision are always on your side. Y si, hablamos español. More information is available by calling 516-593-0920 or visiting online at CelebrityChaseCollision.com. You're listening to the Motor Mouths. Hello, gentlemen. You Next guys one. call yourself hot rodders. Come on, man. I was waiting for you to learn how to trim my bonsai plant. Motor Mouth. Love the show and uh, keep them coming. You have to excuse me. I was just outside messing around with the car. I'm reluctant to say I'm anything like you guys. Motor Mouth. But I am exactly like you guys. I try and keep every old thing going. Good show as usual. Motor Mouth. You guys <laughs> are trouble. I know you guys have your finger on the pulse of stuff. Our train staff of two will help. Come on and ask and answer some car questions. I'm a fountain of useless knowledge. Quite frankly, there are better things to do with your time. <laughs> Instructions are just another man's opinion, Ray. Yeah, I talk to you guys when I need to. I appreciate you. I listen to you. Yeah, I want to know what the is wrong with my car. I'll be glad to answer any questions for you. I can. You're so, different because you glow in the dark, so it's yes. all good. Rob, can I ask you a question? Sure, ask anything. Motor mouth. Have you uh, heard from Ray or Chris saying that this was going to be the best show no. Ever in the no, history you see, of it's mankind. funny because Gray will come in and say, well, Rob, this is going to be the greatest it's show we've Sunday ever done. It's not Sunday morning until I'm sure. And sometimes that Chris... Motor Mouth Radio is going to be the best show that, that was ever done. And then Chris will sometimes joke that it's going to be the worst show they've ever done. There are answers, sometimes correct ones, and we may have them. Motor Mouth Radio, 90.3 FM, WHPC. Motor Mouth! Hey you, get over here. Every Sunday, 12 to 1, you are going to tune in to hear the motor mouths, my friends Ray Guarino and Chris Switzer. 90.3 FM, WHPC. You might learn something. All right, thank you, Chassis John. Thank you, Tower Power, for the flash in the pan. And thanks, Chris, for providing the butane for that segment. It's always good to know we can refill our gaseous substances when we need it. <laughs> so <laughs> That's what I'm good at. <laughs> there we are. We're back. Give us a call, 516-572-7440. And we can talk about cars, motorcycles, heated gear, uh, heated seats, heated... Uh, the uh, tower power, whatever you like. Well, uh, I'm getting a little heated. You know, I have to laugh. Um, I'm looking at the Mar- Mar- the Martrada website uh, uh, during the break, and, and the who? he's very uh, oh, the, Mark. The, okay, yes, and and the uh, looking at some of the pictures and and his work is is it's a very nice site, well laid out, a lot of clear pictures, very cool, simple to read. It's it's not so uh, you're not hanging on one page very long which is is which is nice uh and i'm thinking to myself you know people really think at times that you can restore a car in like a week uh yes because they watch tv yeah exactly well it only took seven days to put this car together and i'm thinking to myself that has got to be the worst fallacy and to talk about like leading someone down a path and a, a path to trouble I was looking online for more cars. I've just literally at night, because I'm do, still doing a lot of schoolwork. <laughs> so, excuse me, at night when when it's just, I'm, I'm tired of staring at the schoolwork, I'll, I'll just look at cars. And it is amazing how many people, and I think I've discussed this before, but how many people have cars that are exploded in pieces. Oh, yeah. And they're asking big money for them. And it's like, all you have to do is put it back together again. Well, if, if it's like a mid-60s Chrysler Imperial and it's exploded all across the garage, you got to be kidding me. Mm-hmm. That is, that's going to be near impossible to put a car like that back together again, at least have it correct. <laughs> Unless you're so well-versed in them. 
Right, unless you've done a half a dozen of them before. And I'm laughing because some of the numbers for like an Imperial convertible that's exploded all over some clown's garage is like 20 grand. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That is not a $20,000 vehicle, sir. That is a pile of trash right there. Uh, uh-huh. That is, you need a shovel to get that car out of the garage. Uh-uh. <laughs> Again, unless you're very, very versed in that. Uh, in that vehicle, you know, and you know it, right. like I, you know, I, I've seen every nut, bolt, screw, and clip in in my car, and of course, owning it for thirty seven years or yeah. more d- doesn't hurt. So you could put parts on the table, and I could tell you where they came from. Of course, um, you can. You know, but uh, again, but if I was to look at like when I've worked in some of the cars at the shop, some of Mike's cars even uh, to restore them, like the Mustang and and the Chevelle, you know, it's like okay, I, I like the Chevelle. I had a lot of information on because it was a Chevy, but the like the Ford wasn't my bag, and I was wow, I had to kind of get a, a you know a whole new education on that. Oh, yeah. And I totally understand that because and that's the joy of this program. Like we always talk about, once you have the knowledge of one thing, it can it can transcend into knowledge of other things. Speaking of that, let's go to the phones, go back to the fun and say hi. You're on with the motor mouths. Good afternoon. This is Tom from Massapequa. Hey, Tom. What's happening? Thomas. Hi, guys. (laughs) Nice to hear you. I have a very technical, not a joke today, a a very my 04 Escalade. Um. Uh, platinum edition, uh, what do you call it, the long version. I got 90,000 miles on it, and I think the brake control module is b- bad. Yeah. We've done some diagnostic work. My son tells me he replaced it once before. When we leave the fuse in on that circuit, the truck doesn't drive properly, like intermittent stops. It doesn't have power. We take the fuse out. It eliminates the ABS. It eliminates the traction control. The truck drives like a beautiful Cadillac Escalade. Okay. okay. Is there any danger to driving in that way? Will it pass inspection? Is, the part is like a $600 part, my son says, and I'm thinking of not replacing it and keeping the car like this or maybe even selling the car like this. And it's in very good condition. Yeah, I'll tell you this. It will. It will. What you do is you just you're just um, bypassing that system, which you can yeah. do. You just keep in mind you're not going to have ABS brakes and traction control and things like that. You will not fail. You will not fail a, a, a inspection because that's really only on emissions related things. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, and and the brakes still work. It's not that they don't work. Uh, it, you know, it may become an issue when you want to sell a vehicle down the road. They're going to say, hey, you know what? This uh, $1,500 controller you didn't put in is now, you know, $3,500. And <laughs> so, right. yeah. So you can, you, can, you can live with that if you so choose. Tom, is that is the number really drive? the number? Is it really 600 say that bucks? Again? Can you, is that number really the number? Is that a retail price? Can you find the part maybe online or find it maybe in a salvage yard or something like that for less? Well, we're going to look into it. He just diagnosed the problem. Uh, we didn't have our go-to guy, Joe D., to meet him in a parking lot with cannolis. So my son bought some software for like 1200 bucks. I forget the, you know, the scan tool. Yeah. And whatever it is, it's like a computer, but it has all the scanning, right? Right. So he seemed to diagnose it with that, and he believes that's the answer. He, he's researching it. He thinks he could buy the part for 600 new or whatever they are. I don't know if that's something. I'm going to discuss it with him further today. I wanted to talk to you guys. I'm honestly just test driving the car now. I'm driving around the parking lot, and I've driven through the neighborhoods in Farmingdale or whatever. It's driving great. I mean, I love the vehicle, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to look into the part, but I'm not sure... If I want to invest in it, you know, we already replaced this vehicle. Right now it's an extra vehicle in the household, although the kids use it when they got to go to work. Is the, is the all-wheel drive effective now? Is it good in the snow with this? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. No, all-wheel drive is very good. That's It's good in the rain and the snow. It's it's good in many different types of weather, for sure. Even without that fusing, right? Well, I, the system. I, you know, if the all-wheel drive is electrically controlled, it may not be working fully. That's that's mm. something. You know what you should do? Compose this into an email and send it to me, and I will run it by Joe and see what he's got to say about it. Oh, I'll do it. I appreciate it. We'll get the yeah, master. And the car, 
but, yes, the but car the, drives great. It's unbelievable. I miss it. I haven't driven in it in a while. But the part in question is the, you said, was the ABS uh, the controller? He said brake control unit. He could get the exact name. He Honestly, he said he's replaced it once before on this truck. Okay. okay. I wonder why it went bad. And That's odd. Yeah. So is that is well, that a, I get it. well is it is that the computer type device, the electrical device, or are we talking about like the ABS block where all the fluid goes through? And I think it's more computer. But okay. I'll I'll try and get more detail from him today. Yeah. Uh, okay. You know, between you and I, this vehicle had prior in the past. It had some sensor modules on the wheels that we've had to replace more than one time. Those are wheel and speed that was sensors, a, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing that Joe di- helped us diagnose right. after the first time, I think. Right, right. We were surprised. So, anyway, uh, yeah. All right, so this is where I'm at. And if the car is like mint, it's unbelievable. Uh, it's We've had it all four with the original owners, and uh, I'd love to keep it in the family. The kids use it like in snow, they go to work or whatever. Right. But anyway. All right. Yeah, keep us yeah, up on that, look. and we'll help you out, I'll Tom. tell you, Tom, take a look online for uh, an, a, contr- a brake control module. You Take a look at the prices, because um, there's, there's a whole bunch of them online here, and they're all different, so I don't know which one you're looking for. But take a look at some of the prices. I think you'll be surprised. Okay. All right. Uh, is this some? Well, you don't know the exact part, but uh, if it's electronic, is it something that I would buy at a junkyard? Like I don't know. Does that exist anymore? Yeah. Well, yeah. That you you literally have to do your homework on something like that. I mean, it's there's a, a lot. Well, a lot to be considered. Let, let me put it this way. Yard. Let's say, God forbid, your truck was in an accident, and. And, and the insurance company totaled it and said, okay, we're going to give you a lot of money for it. And you said, okay, great, buy me out. And it went into a junkyard. And let's say you know, it was hitting a, you know, in, in a side of the vehicle. It has nothing to do with that near that brake controller. And someone went in and bought the brake controller out of it because they needed one for their car. They'd be buying a bad part. So mm, that is true. And, and junkyards aren't going to guarantee the electrical stuff. There's no guarantee. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, with yeah. that, I would go with the new part. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Guys, it's always a you guys, and then have a great day, guys. Thanks, Tom. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Tom. Talk to you bye, soon. Bye, bye. All right, so long. Yeah, that's uh, you know, Chris. We talk about as vehicles age, and I've I've said this for years. If someone wants to restore a late 80s or 90s or later vehicle in another 20 or 30 years, the bigger problem is going to be the computer stuff, the sensors, yes. the boxes. Oh, Same thing with yeah. Tom's car. Like the car, the, the truck is in great shape. I've been in. I look. I've had Striadel and coffee in that car. It's beautiful. It's, <laughs> it's, it's you know it's luxurious. You feel like a celebrity. But like he like you said. It's in great shape, but now as those components and modules start to fail, all right, right. now how much money are you going to put into it? And, and yeah, everybody makes that decision on a case by case basis. You know, and it's true. It's a nine ninety four. It's it's coming up to what? It's it's coming up to thirty years old. Yeah. So yeah, stuff. Uh, computer components will dry out. Yeah. So I, I totally understand the the problem. And yeah, you may be buying another one out of another ninety four. Well. But, you know, sometimes some cars are in better shape than others. That's I why know. I say you have to do your homework. Maybe it's a garaged car or something that, that God forbid, got, got slammed. Let's go to this garage so, and say, hi, you're okay. all the motor mouths. Caller? Now the phone. Okay, now the phone's are screwing with us. There's <laughs> nobody there. Okay. <laughs> all right. Excellent. So yeah, that's the problem uh, with with those with an older vehicle. You just yeah, you just don't no, know. It's I an, totally it's get an, it. And you're absolutely right. It's, it's an 04, down the road. It's an O four huh? Escalade Platinum, not a ninety four. Oh, oh, an O four. Okay. Yeah. Well, still twenty years. Yeah. You know, it's, that's that's. Uh, yeah. That's an interesting time. It's a, it's it's an interesting time for uh, uh, for computer components in general it is i mean who has a 20 year old computer well if you think about no there are places that that service those and sell them there's a place uh, locally that actually rebuilds them uh that rebuilds uh some of the computers so and that's what i think that will be like the new closet industry will be rebuilding these components right that uh, the 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 level control on any big lincoln or uh or A brake control on these caddies, yes. Well, that's it. I'll tell you, like, the ECMs get done because 
that's a major component, and usually without it, well, without it, your car isn't going to run. So people will go for that if they have to. But right. for, like, wheel speed sensors or brake controllers or ABS modules, things that aren't going to screw you on an inspection, those are the things that people, or, or level control, people are going to say, eh, I don't want to put the two or three grand into it. Put right. it instead of Gabriel Hijackers. Or, or let's do away with that system like, like Tom has the option of doing. So I'm I don't, just hoping that that doesn't mess with his inspection. The, no, it won't. Like it said. won't. It won't. The only thing I hope is that with the newer generation of people out there who are car and computer enthusiasts, there'll be a crop of them who will envelop and, and embrace that part of the aftermarket, let's say, right. and start rebuilding this stuff because they grew up with these cars. And they can yeah. maybe find a cottage industry, which turns into a business. So who knows? Maybe instead of like year one and, and all the, uh, the restoration places that we deal with now, maybe we'll have catalogs in the future of just all the electrical components, you know, <laughs> wheel speed sensors and, and uh, ABS controllers. Who knows? I had to take that dive with the, uh, the 84 Corvette that I had that happened to be a five-speed or the 4.3, the 4 plus 3 transmission yeah, manual. Yeah. And I needed an, uh, an ECM for it. I needed right. the, the, the control module. Well, try and find one of those. It was impossible. I could have gotten it rebuilt for like $2,000. My old one, which was a rebuilt unit as it was, it wasn't even a stock one that was uh, original to the car. So I took the chance, like I had said to Tom, and I, I went out on eBay and I bought the only one the only one I could find. Yeah. I purchased it. And believe it or not, it worked. It worked well and, and everything was hunky dory. And the way I look at it is the thing that sold me on it was the guy says, Yeah, it's been sitting on a shelf here for the last 10, 15 years, whatever it was. And I asked him, I said, Was it in a warm spot? Was yeah. it, I mean it didn't didn't go down to like two degrees and then up to like a hundred yeah. degrees, well, was right? It in a it's wet like, spot. No, it was, yeah. It was climate controlled. I'm like, he could have been lying through his teeth. I don't know. But right. but yeah, it, it worked. It, it ran right. the car and, and then everything was fine. So yeah, sometimes you could luck out with an electronic component off a shelf. All right. Let's see if we That's can all. do a, a, let's see if we can do a quick hit and say, hi, you're on with the motor mouths. Yeah, it's never quick. Well, it's going to be quick now because we're at the end of the show. And if it ain't quick, <laughs> it's going to be quick. <laughs> yeah. Hi, it's Joe. What's happening, Joe? <laughs> hey, Joe. Uh, Doing okay. Um, one thing that I'm always curious about, I just got a uh, 06 Jeep, and um, it's weird because the cruise control does the uh, acceleration and everything a lot more economically than I could. I yes. mean, I could try and duplicate everything right. with the pedal, but it just does not want to do it for me. Okay. So so accelerate, because we're, we're running out of time, so we got to make this quick. Yeah. So what's the problem? <laughs> No, I'd like to find out how to break into it to figure out how to do it a little bit better. I don't, I don't, oh, wow, that's really aggressive. I've never really thought about that. I, you know what? I'm a cruise control. You're talking to two guys, one who does, one who doesn't. I use yeah. cruise control all the time. Chris does not. I believe in yeah. it, and it works different in all of my cars. But you know what? I just trust in the system, and I use it, and I've been very happy. So. I tell you, Joe, what I do is I take my foot and I wedge it between the carpet and the gas pedal, yeah. and I leave it there. Because, <laughs> you know, when I don't use it, I notice, and I watch on the same route every day, I have the tendency to go faster on certain spots of the road because the road kind of lends to that, and other people go faster. And even though you're trying to be conservative, you go, you go along with traffic. And the cruise no, it's control. just very frustrating because I'm trying to be good about it. I'm accelerating slowly. I'm keeping the tack low, and I'm not going as fast as I would. Once I hit 25 and the, ta and the cruise control can take over, if I hit that, I feel the pedal leave my foot, and oh. it, the, the speedometer goes up, but the tacks stay down. <laughs> so you use it from a low speed. You see, I get to my cruise speed, then set it. I don't let it bring me to it. No, I'm saying that when I resume. So, okay. like, you know, to set, it's at 30, but okay. to resume, it's 25. Okay. I don't even use it at 30 miles an hour. That's, that's like I said, we are using it in, in different ways, but... Uh, I mean, you could be a hyper miler, and there are those people that sure. never use the brake. I mean, that's usually using your brakes is, is technically, physically, what is ruining your mileage. Yeah. So, the least amount of time you apply the brake Coast. is... Yeah, yeah. Joe, what, that involves coasting. Joe, what town are you from? Where do you live? I'm in Bayshore. 
Okay. Um, all right. So, well, you know, yeah, yeah traffic isn't. Um, yeah, you you yeah. you got the same problems we all have. Um, do. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. I I think. Uh, like Chris said, and I do that with my FJ because it's a big lug and it doesn't get good mileage. I coast more. I accelerate less fast, and you know, and I kind of and, and I do see that. Yeah, I can keep the mileage a little a little better, but there's only so much you're going to do. You know? Yeah, I've been trying all that. That and in this town, they decided to uh, put a stop sign every quarter mile. So it's like you know, we're seeing that in every town around. It's true. But uh, Joe, what are you driving? What are you, what are you driving? Are you trying to save mileage on? Uh, right now, it's an 06 Liberty, Jeep Liberty. Okay. Yeah. All right. Straight six. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I'll tell you yeah, what. You're going to get your 20 miles to a gallon. Keep up <laughs> Keep up with the program and keep us surprised of what you do. Listen, if you find a way to rewrite the logic systems in that cruise control program, let me know because <laughs> maybe I'll do mine too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe. Thanks for the call, brother. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. All right. So long. Chris, I don't, I don't know if you realize that's Joe the Undertaker who we just spoke with. That's why it sounded familiar. Right. <laughs> right. It's been a while. Holy smokes, Joe. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Holy moly. I was like, wow, he sounds familiar. Yes. What was it? He, Joe didn't, was always he didn't introduce. Joe, if you're listening, good speaking to you. <laughs> See, he didn't introduce himself as Joe the Undertaker like he used to do. That's why. And he that's hasn't called right. it in a long time. So it took a while, yeah. but I figured it out. Yeah. So. And he sold his Taurus. <laughs> I, well, he probably still has it in the back somewhere. Well, he probably still, <laughs> it's probably a planter or something. I don't Some know. things never change. So we're going to be getting out of here. Kim is coming in to do Thunder Road. Uh, of course, keep it tuned in like I know you do. And we will see you next week with a guest or not. We don't know, but we'll have more stuff, fun stuff and topicality. And Chris, what do we always tell people? That, that Chassis John tells Brian about going up to make a sandwich. What, what do you say? Don't follow us home. But if you do, bring a ham sandwich. Or a sleeve of Oreos. That's the other one. Right? Oreos. All right. We'll see you next week on Motor Mouth Radio. And uh, keep it where you got it. Drive safe. Try to hype a mile. Save gas. Um, I don't know. What do you want to throw in there? Anything? That sounds good enough. I think you got it all covered. I just want to say see you bye. All right. (laughs) See you next week. Bye.